Hey guys, this is Rachel from Hersey Kiss, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Instagram partnerships, working with brands, collabs, all the different types, how to get them, how to start making money. So I'm gonna talk about my experience with brands. First, if you guys want to skip ahead to partnership stuff, go to the time here. I'll put it, I don't know how long it'll take me to talk. <laughs> okay, so let's dive in. So first things first, I figured I'd tell you guys a little bit about how I got started with partnerships and where that all kind of began for me and how I've been learning along the way. I started my page sophomore year of college, which is now four years ago um, and at the time maybe I had like 300 followers and when I was in school I was in a sorority I was on the leadership team and I was super active in kind of like the community doing a lot of clubs participating in a lot of things so I was reached out by a brand called on campus advertising they are very similar to youth marketing connection both of those are the two first agencies I started working with so they focus on kind of like these comprehensive influencer brand agent programs where it is posting on social and getting like free product but also you need to like go out on campus whether it's like handing out flyers or um going like to events they're hosting in Soho, things like that. They want people who are who have the time and are able to do kind of like bigger things like that. So for me, my first one was with Toast and they are kind of like a European jewelry brand. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I got to go to their store in Soho and it was um, a lot of like posting flyers around campus and doing social posting. And then once that partnership ended, I worked with Youth Marketing Connection on Airy from American Eagle. And that was like one of the most amazing programs I've been a part of. I worked with an agency based out of Boston and they reached out to me via email because they saw my work with Toast. And that was a much more like event focused um, partnership. So with them, they did send like these huge gifting boxes every month, but it was like stuff that they chose for us. And then we would have to post on social, I think like once a month and then do story hauls. And then when they had store openings in New York or they had like um, Iskra coming to an event or Nina Agdal was at one of the events, we had to like hype it up ahead of time and then go to the event and post um, either on our accounts or sometimes we got to take over the airy Instagram story too, which was really fun. So that was kind of like my first dip into partnerships and I got both of those only because I, not only, but like primarily because I was on a campus at the time and there are a ton of campus partnerships like that. So I will talk more about that in a second. When I started with Airy, I maybe had like 200, 300 followers. So it was really that like on campus person that they were looking for, not necessarily my social following. Um, but luckily through that partnership, I got to grow my page, which was really exciting. Oh, I'm winding myself. The next partnership I kind of led myself into was also another brand ambassador position. So that was with another agency called Art Rival. It also does kind of similar programs like that, but they don't just focus on people in college. They focus on all ages. So that was the most amazing partnership I've ever had, I think. Um, they were amazing to work with and the agency really helped us to get to know the company itself they took us all out to their home office which is like their headquarters in ohio and it was really just like summer camp like us like it was maybe like 40 ambassadors all of us together we just like hung out we had campfires we were going to dinners we were just doing all this like super fun stuff together and we really became really close so i loved that partnership it was kind of along the same lines of like gifting and posting on social, but also doing like in-person activation. So for me at that point, I'd graduated college and it was a lot of like fun surprises for people in my life to bring Abercrombie into their life in a new way and like reintroduce them to a brand they already loved. So that was maybe the best partnership I've ever had. And I can talk forever about that. When I started with Abercrombie, I think I had like just over 2,000 and by the end of the partnership um, I had gotten to 5,000 because they were constantly reposting us on their page, they were putting us on their stories, we were on their website wearing all their stuff all the time. So all of those were like really amazing ways to grow my own page and they were what I was looking for at the time I think. Something more like full encompassing that was the only brand you were allowed to work with at one time and it really helped introduce me into this whole world. Yeah, but those are my first three partnerships. And about a year and a half ago when Abercrombie ended, I kind of had to become like freelance and it was my first time doing that. So I was so scared. I really did not even know like how to pitch to brands, how to do any of that. So this is all stuff I've been kind of discovering by myself and trying to figure out and learn. There aren't really any good resources online. So it's really just like trying everything you can, learning from blogger friends. Um, so I just want to share my experiences with you guys to help provide that resource because I feel like it's really hard to like find a place to learn this information. So 
just high level there are a few different types there are actually a bunch of different types of partnerships but kind of the main categories are just like gifting with no posting requirements gifting in exchange for a post or story then there is like paid promotion so getting product and being paid to post it on your feed and story which is kind of i think like the ultimate goal for a lot of people and then um, there's also content creation, which is my favorite thing. So that I think a lot of people don't realize is what like content creators really do is creating content for brands. So if you get something, you take photos for them to use on their own website, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, and it never goes on your own page. So your followers might not see it, but like you're building content for that brand to use and brands will pay actually quite a bit of money for that. And then also it's kind of like the brand ambassador stuff that I was telling you about that I did. So it those are paid opportunities, but each agency kind of pays in a different way. Those are really fun opportunities if you're looking for something that's like more involved than just posting on social. Since I've been doing freelance, I've had the opportunity to work with really cool brands um, like Sephora, French Connection, Forever 21, Princess Polly, Nasty Gal, Shopo, DSW was one of my favorites, The Body Shop, Folane, Nutrafol, Birchbox, and then a few different like swimsuit brands, clothing brands, like there's a lot of like things. Oh, Disarono. There's a lot of cool partnerships out there. A lot of brands do things kind of ad hoc, so it's hard to really know what all of your options are, but hopefully this video gives you guys some clarity on that. I'm gonna dive into each of those different types of partnerships and how they kind of come about. And then at the end, we can talk about pitching or maybe that'll end up being another video. For gifting, if a brand is going to reach out they will probably email you or they will send you a dm and ask to email you and say we want you to try our new product here is like give us your address give us your contact information so we can send it over and it's just simple as that and then they send the stuff and you can try it it's up to you whether or not to post it but usually i try to clarify that ahead of time because sometimes brands will like say it like they're giving you a gift but they expect you to post it so i just try to set all expectations like up front make sure um nobody is gonna get like disappointed there. A lot of brands are a little bit skeevy about it where they will like try to guilt you into like not accepting payment. I don't know. It's it's like a weird dynamic. Um, I think the best way to go about it is to not expect anything from anyone. Every blogger, every brand has their own way of working and their own kind of budgets or like expectations. So you never really know what you're getting into with each brand. Next up is gifting in exchange for posts. A lot of kind of mid-tier clothing brands, um, like trendy, not necessarily fast fashion, but trendy clothing brands will do this actually. And this is what you see a lot of like content creators, bloggers, influencers doing on their pages with um, clothing brands. I don't wanna like name too many. They'll do like monthly giftings. So they'll send you a box of stuff and usually it's like, post one or two things and a story haul. So I've done a few of those. If you follow my page, you probably see a few of those brands regularly. Um, once you get to a certain point, it is ideal to be paid for every sponsored thing. I'm totally okay with gifting in exchange for posts um, it, with certain brands. So for me, um, if it's a brand I really love and I like their stuff and I would wanna post the clothing anyways, then that's something I'm totally okay with. But a lot of brands, um, it's kind of my rule at this point that I only accept paid partnerships, um, but there are a few exceptions to that. So usually it's either like a certain number of items or it'll be a dollar amount. So if you've worked with a brand longer, they'll start to like increase your budget. So for me, sometimes it'll go up to like 450, 500 um, for a month of gifting. So you get to go on their website, pick out everything you want up to that budget limit or up to that item limit, and then they'll mail it to you. And then within two weeks, usually you need to create the content and post it on your page. So that's one of the easiest ways of collaborating. I think a lot of brands do that. Places like Majuri um, are only, like really mostly only do that type of partnership. So some of it's like stuff you genuinely want. I'm, I think that's totally okay to not get paid for it. So next is paid promotion. This is one of my favorite types of partnerships um, is getting paid. The majority, mm, actually the only paid partnerships I've had have been with agencies, not with brands directly, if that makes sense. So um, brands who are working through influencer agencies tend to be a little bit more like legit. They have um, their stuff together a little bit. They are willing to spend bigger budgets to pay other people to manage their influencer stuff. And they have bigger budgets to spend on influencers in general. So agencies will usually email you or reach out and say, we have this really cool opportunity we want to work with you on. And then they'll ask you your rates. So this is where you need to be really self-aware. You need immediate 
media kit and a rate sheet to email them back. So sometimes if a brand will reach out to me, they'll say, we want three in-feed posts and like 10 stories over three months, just say. So then I need to understand like three posts, 10 stories, like how much does all of that equal? I'll tell them how much and I'll, along with the rate card and media kit. And then they'll tell me, go back to their clients, figure out whether or not they're actually able to accommodate that. If they are, yay. A lot of different brands will either like let you go about your business and post if you want, but usually with agencies, they want to approve the content ahead of time. Before you even post, you have to send them the photo. You have to send them the exact caption and everything like that um, for their clients to approve exactly what you're going to be posting. Sometimes if they really have their stuff together, they will be promoting your post through Facebook Business Manager. If you don't know what that is, go learn. Through Facebook Business Manager, you can give different agencies or brands access to your page. And from there, they can sponsor your own things and put their money behind it, if that makes sense. So right now I'm working with a beauty brand and I've given them access to my Facebook business manager. So they're using their dollars, nothing coming out of my pocket. They're just using their own money to sponsor my own stories and posts that I did that are branded content for the beauty brand um, and putting it out there for more people to reach. So it really helps me and it helps them. Um, so that's really a good deal. I love when brands do that. I think it's kind of like a win-win. So once your partnership's over, then you need to figure out invoicing, which was another thing. I was like, I literally don't know how to do this. It's like running a small business. It's crazy. I started using the app Wave and they are amazing for invoicing. They keep everything like super in order. I don't know. I really didn't know how to begin with invoicing. So you want to send a net 30 invoice. So when a partnership ends, the brand, once you send the invoice, they have 30 days to pay you. So, um, the sooner you get all your paperwork and invoicing done after the partnership's over, the sooner you will get paid, ideally. And a lot of people I know have had problems with chasing down brands who have not paid them. I've had that happen a few times. Um, luckily, it didn't have to go to court, but I know people who have gone to court for like not getting paid for their partnerships. So it's all about like hounding them afterwards if they haven't sent the payment through or sometimes it like goes into accounting and then it gets lost and you just need to make sure that you're getting paid for your work usually you get paid over PayPal or via check then it just kind of like goes on from there it all happens over email so that's definitely the most complicated one I have a few other different things content creation is a lot of fun too I did a video for um, Shiseido and they didn't tell me where it was going to be used it was a review of a face mask and I found out later that they were putting it on Sephora so I didn't have to post it anywhere I made this three minute or maybe like a one minute video for them using the face mask giving my review feedback and then in Sephora when you go onto the page I'll show I'll put it here um, when you go onto the page to like view the product and it shows like a video at the end of someone using it like that was me so that was a really fun opportunity those types of things are always paid for the brand to use on their own pages or on their websites a lot of times or just on um, any other platforms where they might be selling their product so that's a really cool opportunity those are honestly like I feel like the most fun because it's less pressure you don't have to put it on your page but you also want to create something really cool that the brand will want to share it out everywhere and spread your own content which is cool a lot of brands have started doing a lot more of this like ugc user generated content that they want on their website on their page so creating that kind of stuff for them is always like so much fun and they love spreading it out a lot of times that's what hotel partnerships are too, where you'll get a free stay in exchange for posting and creating content for them to use on their own. So that's something to be aware of. Um, a lot of brands will only reach out if they want that. It's hard to kind of pitch content creation for people. Okay, next up is brand ambassador programs. And that's what I kind of started my whole Instagram career with. They're a lot of fun. There are a bunch of different agencies that do purely like on campus type of brand partnerships. And I feel like that's the primary place where you can do this type of thing. One of my friends is working for Hint. There's people working for Tinder, Victoria's Secret, um, Express, I think Pink too, or who else? I mean, I was working with Aerie. I know they're still running their program. If you're in college looking for something to do that is like such a good opportunity to get to work with these brands get to know these agencies and just create those relationships early it is a more like comprehensive thing like so for Aerie on Saturdays we would usually have to go out and hand out sunflowers on the street which kind of seemed like I was like oh I don't want to talk to strangers in Soho but then by the end of the day I was having so much fun with it I was there with one of my friends we were working with and we just had these huge buckets of sunflowers and we we're just handing them out to people and we're like here here's a sunflower from Aerie and people were like oh like what are you giving me but it was um actually like very nice to see how something like that could just brighten up their day so that's kind of what 
brands are looking to do with brand ambassador programs is just to like bring a smile to someone's face like from a brand and direct them to the store obviously but just create that moment for them so that was the kind of thing i would have to do in a brand ambassador position but those a lot of times they will either reach out to you or they run ads or you need to find them yourself so just go on google like look up brand ambassador on campus programs or like brand ambassador programs some of them won't have social posting so just make sure you read um, the page and know what you're getting into and know what the payment method is for paid and gifting promotions there are a lot of different like agencies and companies you can work with so I'm going to list out some of the sites here. There are so many. Every single one is going to claim to have like the greatest pool of influencers ever. But like there are so many platforms. It blows my mind that like, I don't know, maybe someone like Coca-Cola goes to five of these different agencies and one of them tells them they have the most influencers. So they only work through that one platform. Then if you're like an influencer and you're only on like the four other ones and you're not on that one, you would never even know that Coca-Cola was doing any kind of partnerships. So it's really important to like join as many of those free platforms as you can, like spread yourself out, like get on all of their email lists so you can know when there's different partnerships come up because sometimes you just don't even know when stuff is happening and you could have had a really cool opportunity if you just signed into this free platform. My favorite one for getting paid has been Aspire IQ. We have unpaid partnerships and paid partnerships, but that's where I've gotten the most paid partnerships on one of these sites. And some of them do have like page size and like requirements so just be aware of that there are so many of those sites too that i didn't even list out there's just a crazy number and i'm trying to join a lot um but if you guys have any other recommendations let me know below too because i need to join some more so on a site like that it'll list out different brands that are currently recruiting for partnerships and then you can um, submit yourself apply to a bunch of them and just see what you get back and then usually you do all the work through their platform and yeah so it's a pretty easy process but aspire iq just looks like really nice so i like using their tool so quickly just touching on a few other types of partnerships there are pr lists you can get on so a lot of PR companies work with their own brands and they like to do gifting. So that's really just gifting. Again, um, a lot of companies do paid reviews or unpaid reviews. So in exchange for a product, they'll pay you to write a review on Amazon or something like that of their product. So that's another like quick, easy way to make money sometimes. That's really all the types of partnerships I can think of. There's probably a ton more. Step one before any of this is to have a business account on Instagram and to make sure that you have an email on your page. You need an email that's completely separate that's for your Instagram business so that brands can reach out to you and know you're kind of professional, if that makes sense. I have a Gmail. A lot of people I know who are like up to 100,000 still even have a Gmail without their own like dedicated website. So you don't need that. You can do a Gmail. I have hersey.kiss.contact at gmail.com and that works just fine. So my friend and I had a sunglasses brand and when I was creating my media kit, I wanted to know what like big influencers media kits looked like. So I reached out to people in like the 150,000 range and asked them like, I would love to partner with you. This is like a little, little shady, but um, I was like, I would love to partner with you. And I was interested in like what their rates were and they sent me their media kit so that's kind of how I what I based my media kit off of was what they had in their media kits and one girl worked with this um, influencer management agency that I actually was going to go work at um, for my nine to five so it was cool to see that like she has management who was working on her page and they had approved that media kit so I was like that's what I'm gonna go with so I use that kind of as a template for my own page which was just maybe like the biggest blessing <laughs> There are a lot of online resources. Four is a really good place to look if you need one. Maybe I should do another video on like setting your rate sheet and prices for different things on your page. Um, but that was one of the hardest things for me to figure out when I started going like freelance. I had always gotten either an hourly rate or like a monthly stipend. It was really tough to figure out how to start pitching brands, how to start getting paid and doing that interaction. Really learn from other people and get a feel for um, what other people in your like size category are charging and what their media kits look like. You can even go on Canva. Canva is where I made mine. They have like so many just templates. You can just plug things in. Big takeaway here is that you don't need a huge following to get started with this type of thing. For me, I started with like 200 followers and it was just kind of like, a fun thing to do and then it turned into an actual like source of income so if you're looking to work with brands 
get a media kit, get a business account, get a business email, get a rate sheet, and really start to join a lot of these platforms and understand what your options are out there. And eventually things will just start flowing in, coming towards you. If you guys have any questions about partnerships or anything else like I didn't answer, feel free to comment below or DM me. My Instagram is hersikiss and you guys can reach me there. Thanks guys, bye.